Refugees, a global issue. War, persecution, torture have generated a number of refugees in the world unprecedented since World War II. In many countries, refugees are confused with immigrants, but the two categories are remarkably different from each other. Most of the immigrants decide to leave their country in search of better economic opportunities. Refugees have no choice and are forced to flee because remaining in their countries may put their liberty and their very life in danger. Everywhere, radical politicians fuel the popular fear of refugees and immigrants. Christians in all countries stand up for the rights of refugees, particularly those who escape religious persecution. One such group is the Church of Almighty God, which is heavily persecuted in China. In Germany, the German Evangelical Church, the largest Protestant church in the country, has raised its voice in favor of the refugees of the Church of Almighty God. In Italy, pastors of the Waldensian Church, the oldest Protestant denomination in the world, give shelter and help members of the Church of Almighty God upon their arrival in the country. In the Czech Republic, the Silesian Church of Evangelical Augsburg Confession, the Ecumenical Council of Churches, and the Czech Catholic Episcopal Conference have signed appeals and organized meetings to support the same Chinese refugees. In Korea, however, the unthinkable happened. Rather than siding with refugees and defending their human rights, people claiming to be Christians took to the street and staged demonstrations not in favor, but against harmless asylum seekers from the Church of Almighty God. How was it possible? Who manipulated them? Bitter Winter investigated the issue and is able to tell you the full story. According to almost all international reports on religious liberty, China holds the world record for violations of religious liberty and persecution of religious believers. In China, only five religions whose leaders are appointed by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, and which are strictly controlled by the government can operate freely, although they too are subject to limitations. Sociologists call this the red market of religion. Millions of believers are part of a gray market, which includes thousands of Protestant house churches. With a new law that came into force on February 1, 2018, President Xi Jinping vowed to destroy this gray market, compelling most house churches to join the official Protestant Three Self Church and persecuting the others. President Xi also promoted a crackdown on Muslims, Buddhists, and others not part of the official red market. Scholars believe that one and a half million religious believers are detained in the dreaded transformation through education camps, in fact, concentration camps, where people are submitted to heavy labor and indoctrination regimes are tortured and die. One million of them are Uyghur Muslims. But there are believers in China persecuted even more heavily than those in the gray market. They are part of the black market of the religions included in the list of Xiaotao, periodically updated by the authorities. The CCP translates Xiaotao as evil cults to elicit the sympathy of those concerned with cults in other countries. However, this translation is misleading. Xiaotao means heterodox teachings, and lists of Xiaotao have been compiled since the late Ming period. The Chinese emperor decided what religious teachings were heterodox based on his own judgment. Xia Chao were banned and their members hunted, tortured, and killed. In practice, the Chinese emperor listed or did not list a group as Xia Chao largely based on political evaluations. Christianity as a whole was listed as Xia Chao in 1725, but went out of the list in 1842 because of Western military pressure. The CCP, as the new emperor, has continued this practice, but it has given it a modern legal framework. Article 300 of the Chinese Criminal Code punishes using a Xia Chao with a three to seven years jail penalty or more 
case law shows that using a Sia Chao means being active in any capacity in a group listed as a Sia Chao. Being a leader is not necessary. And even having been found in possession of literature of a Sia Chao is enough to go to jail. As it happened in the Chinese Empire, definitions of Sia Chao are vague. For all practical purposes, a group is a Sia Chao if the CCP has included it in its list of Sia Chao. The Church of Almighty God is the largest and fastest growing Chinese Christian new religious movement. Governmental sources credit it with four million members. It was founded in 1991, and it teaches that Jesus has returned to earth as Almighty God, incarnating in a Chinese woman. The Church believes that she teaches the fullness of truth and purifies humans in the view of the future millennial kingdom. Most of her utterances are collected in the book The Word Appears in the Flesh, which had been studied with interest by several Western religious scholars. The Church of Almighty God believes that the CCP has always resisted God and brutally persecuted Christians and is a manifestation of the evil red dragon of the Book of Revelation. As Emily Dunn, an Australian scholar, noticed, this interpretation of the Great Red Dragon is not unique to the Church of Almighty God and is found in other Christian churches in China, including some in the tradition of the Little Flock and the Shouters. The Church of Almighty God also teaches that the Red Dragon will fall by itself under the weight of its crimes and does not advocate any revolution. It is because of its phenomenal growth and its theology opposed to communist atheism that the Church of Almighty God has been mercilessly persecuted by the CCP. It has been listed as a Sia Shao since 1995. It claims that more than 300,000 of its members have been arrested. NGOs have documented numerous cases of torture, extrajudicial killings, and suspected organ harvesting. Evidence of these atrocities has been presented to the Human Rights Council of the United Nations in view of China's 2018 Universal Periodic Review, a review of the human rights situation the United Nations carry out with respect to all their member states every five years. The CCP has tried to justify the persecution by one of the most massive campaigns of fake news in recent times, by accusing the Church of Almighty God of a number of crimes. The persecution, however, was not motivated by the alleged crimes. It started at least in 1995, and the first accusation of crimes surfaced in 2002. Most importantly, these accusations are false. The main accusation is that the church was responsible for the homicide of a saleswoman in a McDonald's diner in Xiaowan, Shandong in 2014. The CCP invited Western scholars to China twice in 2017, trying to persuade them that such was the case. However, by studying documents supplied by or published by CCP, Western scholars came to the conclusion that the McDonald's crime was perpetrated by a different religious group, which had nothing to do with the Church of Almighty God. Other fake news were also debunked by scholars. The CCP claims that the church caused disorders in 2012 when it announced the end of the world. Even hostile scholars have pointed out that this was impossible as there is no end of the world in the theology of the Church of Almighty God and no apocalyptic disasters as long as the person it worships as Almighty God is alive on earth, and she obviously was in 2012. Some members of the church shared the widespread enthusiasm in China for the so-called Mayan prophecies about the end of the world in 2012, but they were disciplined by the church and some were expelled. Another fake news is that the Church of Almighty God is against the family and break families. In fact, the theology of the Church of Almighty God proclaims that the family exists because of God's sovereignty and arrangement and is a positive feature of human society. Almighty God teaches, were it not for the Creator's predestination and His guidance, a life newly born into this world would not know where to go or where to stay, would have no relations, belong nowhere, and have no real home. But because of the Creator's meticulous arrangements, it begins the journey of its life with a place to stay, parents, a place it belongs to, and relatives. 
In the words of Xiao Wei Shan, the main administrative leader of the Church of Almighty God, referred to in the church as the man used by the Holy Spirit, getting married and having children originate from God's creation and predestination. It was God who initially created man and woman in order for mankind to reproduce and multiply. This is an indisputable fact. Since getting married and having children originate from God, therefore they are positive things. This is undeniable. Italian sociologist Professor Massimo Intravigna, editor-in-chief of Bitter Winter, conducted in 2018 a survey among members of the Church of Almighty God in several countries, which resulted in a study published by Baylor University, the well-known Baptist University in Waco, Texas, in its prestigious interdisciplinary journal of research on religion. The survey proved that although other methods of proselytization also exist, most devotees of the Church of Almighty God were converted by members of their family and in turn tried to convert their relatives. On the other hand, it's factually true that families of members of the Church of Almighty God are broken. They are broken by CCP persecution, which separates spouses by arresting one of them or both with husbands and wives sent to different jails and compels members of the church to leave their families by fleeing abroad to escape imminent arrest. The CCP has tried to enlist some pastors and lay members of the Christian churches, both in China and abroad, to support its persecution of the Church of Almighty God. Some churches see with concern the rapid growth of the Church of Almighty God and regard it as a dangerous competitor. Others disagree with its theology and label it as heretic or non-Christian. Professor Holly Folk, a well-known American expert of new forms of Christianity who teaches at Western Washington University, has studied the theology of the Church of Almighty God and concluded that it is clearly Christian. In the history of religions, theological debates are often acrimonious and they never really end. However, it is very important to distinguish questions of theology from questions of justice and human rights. It is legitimate for some other religious groups to state that they disagree with the theology of the Church of Almighty God. It is not legitimate to support the persecution, torture, and killing of members of the Church of Almighty God by the CCP or to cooperate in the spreading of fake news. That Christians may justify slander, persecution, and murder simply because they disagree with the theology of a certain group is indeed a scandal. Some Christians hostile to the Church of Almighty God have promoted a fake news of their own. In 2002, they claimed that the church had kidnapped 34 leaders of a Chinese house church, China Gospel Fellowship, CGF, hoping to convert them. The CGF contacted the police and eventually all were released, except one who in fact converted to the Church of Almighty God, or so the story goes. But in fact, the Chinese police never investigated the alleged incident, no charges were filed, and the CCP never mentioned the so-called kidnapping before foreign scholars attracted its attention on it in 2017. It is hard to believe that the Church of Almighty God, heavily persecuted as it was, may have mounted such a large kidnapping operation in 2002, or that the CGF, which was also persecuted at the time, would easily fall for it and even cooperate with the police. Most probably, the CGF reinterpreted as kidnapping the fact that several of its members and leaders converted to the Church of Almighty God after participating in seminars that quite understandably, given the situation of persecution in China, were not initially advertised by using the name of the church. Korea is not the only country where Christian self-proclaimed heresy hunters are active in denouncing groups they call heretic and cults. Obviously, their hatred was used and incited by some insidious people. That's why people calling themselves Christians attack and harass harmless refugees who fled to the country to seek asylum because they were subjected to persecution due to their belief. Both Protestant and Catholic authorities stated that refugees are sacred and that Jesus Christ himself was a refugee when he and his parents had to escape King Herod's persecution and flee to Egypt. One such heresy hunter in Korea is Miss Oh Myung-ok, 
In 1994, she started a magazine with the revealing name of Church and Heresy, later renamed Religion and Truth. Although Ms. O oh is certainly persuaded that her personal beliefs are the only truth and that all the rest is heresy and has attacked numerous groups, she seems to have a suspicious tendency to identify as heretic the groups the CCP in China lists as Xi Shao and whose persecution the CCP needs to justify. In 2006, when China was under heavy criticism by international organizations for its persecution of Falun Gong, Ms. Oh launched a campaign against Falun Gong in Korea, and in 2017, she even published an anti-Falun Gong book. Ms. Oh now specializes in supporting the CCP's persecution of the Church of Almighty God. Her strategy involves a close cooperation with the CCP, and has followed repeatedly the same pattern. The CCP, through threats or other forms of pressure, recruits a relative of a Church of Almighty God refugee in Korea. They bring this relative to Korea, accompanied and strictly watched by state security agents. Ms. Oh picks up the party at the airport and organizes press conferences and other events aimed at persuading the Korean authorities and public opinion that parents or siblings came to Korea to persuade their relatives who have been isolated from their families by the Church of Almighty God to come home. Obviously, the refugees are in Korea because they fled, not their families, but persecution. And should they go back to China, they would not go home, but directly to jail. There are several examples of asylum seekers from the Church of Almighty God who returned to China for different reasons. Even those who had kept a low profile in their recipient country were promptly arrested. This happens because not only the CCP keeps a close watch on communities of the Church of Almighty God abroad, but it is helped by fellow travelers such as Ms. O. Oh. On September 6, 2016, in her personal blog, Ms. O oh released detailed information about more than 70 asylum seekers of the Church of Almighty God in South Korea. The detailed information included each refugee's real name, gender, ethnic group, specific home address in mainland China, the names of the Church of Almighty God's movies or dramas in which they performed, as well as the names of the roles they played. Photos of 35 church members were also illegally released. Most of the photos were from their passports. She also published the same information on religion and truth in September 2016. Not only were her actions illegal and exposing asylum seekers in Korea and their families in China to serious danger, but how she was able to obtain such detailed information and copies of the passports as a simple private citizen was not explained. On August 4, 2018, Bitter Winter published a secret document by the Chinese Communist Party calling for harassment in South Korea of the asylum seekers of the Church of Almighty God. The CCP called for the recruitment of the relatives of the asylum seekers who still live in China, if necessary through threats and coercion, who would then call for the return home of the refugees. This was obviously Miss O's method and something she had done before for individual cases. However, the CCP now planned to extend the practice by bringing several relatives to Korea at the same time and organize street demonstrations. The plan was put in execution in August 2018. On August 27th, Miss O published several reports on pro-Chinese and anti-cult Korean media, including her own religion and truth propagating the usual fake news and claiming that the Church of Almighty God members in Korea are disguised refugees and are abusing the refugee system. She also repeated the usual lie, debunked by scholars, that the belief in Almighty God leads to family disruption. These reports strongly called for the deportation of church members back to China. On the afternoon of August 30th, Mr. Chen, an asylum seeker in Korea of the Church of Almighty God, learned from his mother, who currently lives in China, that CCP officers had gone to his family two months ago, asking his relatives to cooperate with them by going to Korea to get him back to China. Other relatives of church members were requested by the CCP to do the same thing. The CCP especially opened a WeChat account to have frequent discussions with them about this, 
This member's mother also told him that his elder sister and her husband were on their way to Korea with state security staff members. They were asked to stay in South Korea as long as possible. His mother insisted, things are getting serious. You better come back with them or else we'll get into big trouble. Ms. Kim, a Korean Chinese member of the church and her husband, had also fled to Korea because of the CCP's persecution in China. On August 29th, when she made a phone call to her mother, who lives in China, she was told that her mother and cousin would come to Korea to visit her and that they were waiting for the plane flying to Jeju at the moment. The refugee told her mother that they live in Seoul and asked her to fly to Seoul directly. But her mother said she couldn't do that since they had to stay in Jeju for two days and then go to Seoul later as scheduled and that their hotel rooms in Jeju had already been booked. The refugee noticed that her mother hesitated over talking and even left to her cousin the conversation when she couldn't make herself clear. It's important to note that this cousin is working for a governmental television station in China. On the afternoon of August 30th, Ms. Oh myung Ok went to Jeju Airport to pick up two cameramen flying from Seoul. In the meantime, 11 Chinese relatives had arrived in Jeju. According to Ms. Oh, there were 13 relatives coming to South Korea. Demonstrations were staged first in Jeju, a key point of entry of refugees into Korea. When the refugees learned that their family members were coming to Korea, they asked to meet them as soon as possible. So with the help of the Korean police, the Church of Almighty God contacted Ms. Oh on their behalf, asking her to arrange meetings with their family members. But Ms. Oh turned them down. According to the written information she rendered to the police, she couldn't let them meet each other until they finished their demonstrations. Ms. Oh held a press conference in Jeju on August 31st, and she claimed that the Church of Almighty God was preventing its members from meeting their relatives coming from China to Korea. The opposite was the case, as it was Ms. Oh who prevented the relatives from meeting the church members. Ms. Oh planned to stage false, spontaneous street demonstrations and recruited anti-cultists from Christian churches. The latter's number was minimal, and in order to stage credible, spontaneous demonstrations, Ms. Oh had to recruit also local thugs who work as professional demonstrators for a fee. On August 31st, nine international NGOs published an appeal denouncing the Chinese plot and asking South Korean authorities to thwart it. Bitter Winter published it. It was the most read article of Bitter Winter ever, and visitors to the Bitter Winter website skyrocketed in one day. The reaction was not late in manifesting itself. Bitter Winter's English website was subject to a hacker's attack, not for the first time, which shut it down temporarily. Meanwhile, a violent demonstration took place in front of the sole premises of the Church of Almighty God at Onsu. For a fortunate coincidence, believers would call it divine providence, Mr. Peter Zoher, an Austrian journalist and the secretary of FOREF, Forum for Religious Freedom Europe, was attending a conference in Seoul. Informed of the planned demonstrations, he decided to visit the Church of Almighty God in Seoul to collect testimonies of torture in China and was an eyewitness to the events. On September 2nd at 12.30 noon, Ms. Oh brought to the Church of Almighty God's premises seven relatives of church members and the small group of anti-cult activists, as well as about a dozen of paid professional demonstrators. A group of men raised four banners across the entrance of the building. At approximately 1 p.m., 30 individuals appeared at the Ansu Church entrance in succession to participate in the demonstration and used megaphones and speakers to loudly insult and abuse both the Church of Almighty God and the person it worships as Almighty God. According to witnesses who had been on the scene, the decibel level of the demonstration was an assault on the senses, making people feel unwell, and it was above the legal noise limit. Furthermore, the clamoring and shouting greatly disturbed the activities of the populace in the area and affected the Sunday services of the local Christian churches as well. Holding their loudspeakers in hand with an emotional tone, the professional demonstrators shouted and asked the church members to come out and to meet their relatives, with sentences such as, Mom is missing you, please come out and meet me, and so on. They tried to create the false impression that the Church of Almighty God stops its members from seeing their relatives. As mentioned earlier, the contrary was true. 
Church members did not react to the provocation. They only exposed a banner with the appeal of the nine NGOs. The demonstration lasted for five and a half hours. The demonstrators shouting their slogans with the most fervor were two or three Koreans, not the Chinese nationals who had come to visit family members. Peter Zor later reported that there were more people from the media than there were demonstrators. At 3 p.m., a vehicle that had left to run errands returned to the Ansu Church. As the vehicle pulled up to the entrance, Ms. O oh instructed the demonstrators on the scene, block the car, block the car. Then she waved her hands, asking all the relatives to come around, and one of the paid professional demonstrators immediately lied down on the ground in front of the car, holding a loudspeaker to yell, followed by some others. And in response, more than 10 demonstrators surrounded the vehicle from all sides, and they beat at the car's windows with all of their strength to force the person inside to open them. Then demonstrators proceeded to take out cameras and take pictures of the inside of the vehicle as it remained still, blocked from moving forward or backward. Ms. O oh even viciously kicked at the vehicle multiple times, and she was inciting others to fiercely trample on the car. Finally, before allowing the vehicle to pull into the church, Ms. O oh demanded that the driver roll down the windows so that more than 10 demonstrators could look in, one by one, and see who the persons inside were. Luckily, Mr. Zorer was able to film the process. The deadlock lasted for almost half an hour, and at last, the car was able to move to the parking lot. Mr. Zorer was protected by his being a foreigner and showing his card as a journalist, but the church members had to be escorted by the police. Sometime after 4 p.m., the two sides tried to negotiate a meeting between a relative and a female member of the Church of Almighty God. The church member, Ms. Kim, her husband, and her mother-in-law, accompanied by the police, went to see her mother, who had been demonstrating outside the church. Ms. Kim asked her mother why she had to try such a devious way to find her instead of directly flying to Seoul to meet her, since she wanted to see her, but her mother just dodged her question. Ms. Kim and her husband explained to the woman that they had escaped to Korea to avoid arrest or worse were happy to be free to practice their religion in Seoul and would surely be arrested should they return to China. They also asked her to stay so they could take care of her, but the woman had made up her mind to go back to China. The meeting lasted only 20 minutes when the mother left in a hurry. Shortly after 5 p.m., an agitated individual among the demonstrators tried to barge directly into the church and was obstructed by church members. Not resigned to failure, the individual continued to try to force his way in, and when one church member raised a hand to stop him, the individual fell on his back, then pretended that he had been pushed over and called the police. After the police arrived, the Church of Almighty God's representatives explained that the church's surveillance camera had recorded the whole incident. The surveillance camera footage verified that the demonstrator who had been trying to get into the church had clearly fallen backwards on purpose and then pretended to have been thrown to the ground. Once exposed, the person who had tried to break in immediately tried to change his story, stating that he hadn't been injured and that he just wanted to let family members see one another. During the demonstration, demonstrators illegally attempted to force entry into the church to cause trouble multiple times, and church members had to continually block them to keep them out. On September 3rd, led by Ms. O, oh, the people from the media, Ms. Kim's mother and other Chinese relatives, repeated the demonstration in front of the Blue House, the residence of the President of the Republic of Korea. But it began to rain heavily half an hour later, and the show was short and did not attract much attention. That afternoon, Mr. Peter Zorer once again went to the Ansu Church of Almighty God to have interviews with the church members whose relatives had come to South Korea to seek for relatives. These members spoke out their stories of how they fled to South Korea to escape persecution in China due to their belief in Almighty God. They felt very indignant and worried about the fact that their relatives were obviously deceived and used by the CCP. Their relatives, they said, came to South Korea just to cooperate with the CCP to create trouble for the church. On September 4th, 2018, at 10 a.m., thanks to the mediation of the police, Ms. O oh and her colleagues had to allow the church members to meet their relatives. 
As they reported to Peter Zor after the meeting, the refugees explained to their relatives that it was their own free decision to flee to South Korea, where they can practice their religion openly because of the Chinese Communist regime's inhumane persecution of their religion in China, and that they are totally free to come and go from the church's premises as they please. When in turn, the church members asked their relatives questions, for instance, who told them they were held against their will by the church, why the relatives came to Korea now and who brought them there and paid for their tickets and so on, they just dodged the questions. At the same time, Miss O kept making trouble outside the premises of the church under the pretext of seeking for relatives. On September 4th, 2018, at 1.15 p.m., led by Ms. O, about 20 demonstrators drove to the Church of Almighty God's Worship Building, located at Chongqianbukdo in Seoul. They hung up banners along the roadsides in front of the church building and got ready for another demonstration against the Church of Almighty God. Simultaneously, KBS, the leading Korean TV network, and the Christian TV CBS were also on site to follow up and report the demonstration. Unlike the one in Ansu on September 2nd, this demonstration was not attended by any Chinese relative of the asylum seekers because they were meeting with the refugees at the time. As reported by Peter Zeller, the demonstrators violated Korean law in at least four counts, which was a mistake on their part and led to the demonstration ending in disgrace. First, Zor said the demonstration was officially registered from 2 o'clock p.m. until 4 o'clock p.m., but already at 1.45 p.m., they arrived and started to chant and scream through their loudspeakers turned on maximum volume. That was their first mistake. Their second mistake was to exceed the legal limitation of demonstration, trespassing on the premises of the Church of Almighty God to stage the demonstration and they even raised banners to cover the banner with the appeal of the nine NGOs that the church had exposed. Their third mistake was to park their pickup truck illegally within the private premises of the Church of Almighty God. And the fourth mistake was not to back up from these illegal activities once they had been requested to do so by a lawyer representing the Church of Almighty God. At 1.48 p.m., a middle-aged demonstrator jumped into the rear of a truck and yelled, while some others echoed his shouting with sporadic words. During the time, Ms. O oh walked up to the man and kept whispering to him. Then the man took out a prepared paper and shouted out the texts. Shortly after the demonstration had begun, others came in a vehicle and joined the demonstrators. The women among them were in headscarves, while the men were of tanned skin they didn't look like they were Korean. The police officers asked why they were there, and they answered they were called to come, but they didn't know what to do next. The police told them that a demonstration was in progress there and that they'd better leave. They all left quickly. At 1.53 p.m., a lawyer representing the Church of Almighty God went out of the building to remind the demonstrators that they had crossed the legal limitations of their demonstration and trespassed on the premises of the church. He requested the demonstrators to move away their truck that was parked in front of the church building together with their banners. The leading demonstrator became hysterical and began to yell. He refused to move the truck under the pretext of not having the key and angrily confronted the lawyer. Having no choice, the church members had to call the police to solve the problem. A few minutes later, the police arrived to deal with those demonstrators and asked them to leave. At 2.21 p.m., Miss O and her people had to move away their truck and banners. The demonstrators marched to the west. At that time, only a handful of demonstrators remained in front of the church building, and they were scattered along the roadside opposite it. The entire demonstration had lasted only a half an hour and ended in failure. At 2.50 p.m., Peter Zor appeared at the entrance of the worship building. KBS, CBS, and other TV stations asked to interview him. Ms. O oh saw the reporters invited by her surround Mr. Zor for the interview and soon packed up and left. The presence of a foreign journalist was not part of her or the CCP's plans. At 3 p.m., the reporter and the producer of KBS Xiangzhu conducted an in-depth interview with Mr. Zor at the security office of the worship building. 
The reporter raised questions such as whether the Church of Almighty God is persecuted in China, whether its members fled to South Korea because of the persecution, and what Mr. Zorer knows about the human rights situation of the refugees. Mr. Zorer explained that nobody can seriously dispute that the Church of Almighty God is persecuted in China and that its members fled to South Korea to escape persecution, yet their families were disrupted. But this was the fault of the CCP rather than that of the Church. When he asked about how he learned about the persecution of the Church of Almighty God, Mr. Zorer replied that he learned it through his studying the Church for more than a year. He also mentioned that during his personal interviews with several church members, he found their persecution stories very credible. He also explained that church members are preparing affidavits about the abuse and torture they suffered in China. Mr. Zorer also mentioned the leaked internal document from CCP published by Bitter Winter on how to conduct demonstrations against refugees in South Korea and how this script was faithfully executed by Ms. O. Oh. He added that, as an eyewitness to the events, it was pretty obvious to him that most demonstrators were hired thugs with no knowledge whatsoever of the Church of Almighty God. Zorer concluded, The very foundation of America is actually uh, the seeking religious freedom, because they, they could not uh, have religious freedom in, in Europe. They, they went all the way to America. This is the foundation of America. This is why, especially in America, they never forget to this is freedom. This is like a holy right for the Americans. And, uh, uh, you know, this is no different. You know, no different. They come here uh, under very difficult circumstances uh, for, for the sake of finding freedom, religious freedom, finding their human rights. The entire interview lasted for an hour and a half. Parts of it were later aired by the KBS, together with footage of the demonstrations and of Ms. O oh reiterating her claims. Christian media, sympathetic to or connected with Ms. O, oh, including CBS, CTS, and Cookman Ilbo, contented themselves with broadcasting her version and repeating the old and discredited fake news about the McDonald's murder and the alleged anti-family attitude of the Church of Almighty God. Bitter Winters editor-in-chief, Massimo Introvigna, wrote an open letter to them on September 9th. He explained that he is personally a Roman Catholic and that most of the scholars and human rights activists who defend the Church of Almighty God against persecution and fake news are Christian. None of them is a member of the Church of Almighty God, whose theology is far from theirs. Yet, they do not confuse theology and human rights and do not believe that asylum seekers should be denied the status of refugees or deported back to their torturers and executioners simply because some happen to disagree with their theology. On September 13, 2018, Ms. Rosita Chorite, a former diplomat with 25 years of experience in humanitarian issues and the president of Orlier, the International Observatory of Religious Liberty of Refugees spoke in Warsaw, Poland at the Human Dimension Implementation Meeting of the OSCE, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Most members of, the church, of this church would flee only uh, their country only and when they have the confirmed information that their arrest is imminent. So they do not flee to seek our jobs or get financial or economic benefits. On August 31st, despite protests by the Red Cross and the German Ev Evangelical Lutheran Church and several NGOs, a member of this church, Sister Zhao, was deported back from China, from, uh, to China from Germany. She has disappeared in China and her whereabouts are known ever, ever since. My pleading today to the representatives of the participating states is, please hear and remember the name of the Church of Almighty God. Please carry out serious research about this group do not believe what Chinese media and Western media that copy them are saying, but read reliable information from independent NGOs and academic sources. China spares no effort and financial means to persuade us. May I kindly us. ask the speaker to conclude? So, okay, so perhaps we cannot change the politics in China, but there is a moral and legal obligation for the member states to protect the people who are in imminent danger. Thank you.